Welcome, Marvelous Makers and Art Appreciators to the Art Space Podcast, brought to you by Lemon Street Gallery and Art Space, located at 4601 Sheridan Road. Stop on by. Oh, I panicked and I went back to the original stop on by. <laughs> I've been I've been saying alternatives to stop on by the last couple of episodes, but I panicked this time. So stop <laughs> on by your favorite shit, citrus-themed art gallery. <laughs> citrus. Oh, God. <laughs> And I'm not, we're not going to cut this out. We're leaving this in. Yes. Stop on by your favorite citrus themed, <laughs> okay. like th orange or lemon, Lemon Street Gallery. And I'm your host, Shelby Nesman. And I'm the fool, Jay Coy. <laughs> <laughs> and today we are talking with uh, Rudebeckia Press. Um, we've got Lisa Bogulki here and Rebecca Bogulki with us. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for joining us. I've made enough of a fool of myself <laughs> that you guys couldn't possibly do anything more embarrassing. Yeah, I'm oh. totally relaxed now. Yeah. No reason yeah. to be nervous. Mm -hmm. Started <laughs> off on the right foot. Exactly what we needed. I'm yes. like a sponge. I absorb all the <laughs> negative energy. <laughs> Focus it on myself. Oh. Well, I don't know if that's a good superpower or not. So. It's fine. We'll no. just well, move on. Okay. <laughs> it's okay because he turns out happy and smiley all the time anyway so. i'm smiling i'm <laughs> laughing we're giggling <laughs> we're having great. fun <laughs> um so kind of getting um introduced to you guys um what kind of art do you just do in general well i'm um, together we make blank books and journals and illustrative prints what else do we do no, that's kind of it. Oh, wait, no, no. We do recycled projects where we reclaim items that were damaged or broken. Um, yeah, those are parts of books. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah so <laughs> she's correct. <laughs> we are bookbinders and printmakers, traditional printmakers, um, generally relief cut, but we also do a quite a bit of silkscreen and We've actually thrown in a little, I should say, Lisa has thrown a little intaglio in um, recently. And then um, we hand color. hand color. So if there's any, any color in our prints, it's hand colored. Nice. And I don't nice. do it because I'm a very poor painter. Oh. She lies. Mm -hmm. She's not a poor painter. She just doesn't like it. It's so she different. gives it to you. <laughs> yes. That's well, also fair. Yeah, that is that is true. It actually works out really nice because there are parts... Um, of both the printing process and the coloring process and uh, the book binding process that each one of us doesn't like and the other one has no problem doing it. So it's kind of like it's for already split. Synergy. It's like, oh, it yeah. does. It is perfect synergy. Oh, it was perfect. It you does. Guys, it works out well. You guys were meant to do this together. We oh. were. Well, we were, we're going to launch right into a segment that we have on the show. I don't know if you guys know our dynamic or not, but Shelby is a talented artist and I am not. And I do not know very much about art I'm learning throughout this podcast I'm learning. So I heard a couple words in that little preamble that I went, huh? And the one that stuck out the most to me is intaglio. Intaglio? Intaglio. Mm -hmm. what, what is that? It's actually the most common form of printmaking because that's how paper money is made. Oh. And so it's scratching into uh, copper or zinc or steel plates, and then you're able to, whatever you scratch holds the design. Uh, that's where the ink goes. And so the, whatever you scratch when you print it becomes the piece. And so okay. because it is money all around the world, currency. Everybody mm -hmm. has it in their pocket right now. Yeah, actually, the U.S. government still hires engravers wow mm -hmm. yeah so it's it counts as printmaking it's yep. a type of printmaking mm -hmm. okay so yeah the ink just gets forced into the scratched areas slightly removed from the surface and just yeah ran through a press this has been educate jake yeah. our, our segment <laughs> Woohoo! right off the bat Boom. check that off <laughs> oddly enough it is our least favorite type of oh. printmaking but people love it. Okay. Oh yeah, but it's it's the least favorite because it's one of the more toxic ones. So you oh, really need chemicals. Yeah, yeah, you really need good ventilation. You can't really do it at home. You could do dry point at home, but any of the fun stuff, etching or adding a texture, yeah, you have to do it in a place that's well ventilated. What's dry point? Um, dry point is just scratching into the surface with like a a well a needle or a stylus or a, even a nail where you just scratch on the surface so you're just drawing it's really free form they don't last very long because the um burrs kind of fold in so there's this is on metal mm -hmm. yeah okay um 
this so the most stable kind of mentality was an engraving which you're um cutting like a v shape out of it and because there's nothing to fold in it remains a solid really dark black point which is why money is done that way makes sense mm -hmm. wow you guys are experts <laughs> well at least i should be i was gonna say that a teacher <laughs> at carthage so or a professor at carthage um so you at carthage you teach primarily printmaking yeah, this semester I have drawing and fibers and textiles as well, oh, nice. but I handle all four printmaking processes, which is why um, normally Becky and I prefer relief printmaking and silkscreen because those are easily to do at home and mm -hmm. it's really wonderful. But because I teach all four courses, I need to do demo projects and usually the demos I do in class end up being Rude Becky projects. Aww. Yes. Yeah, kind of transform them. So. Mm -hmm. Good, good chance to kind of take the opportunity of just, eh, let's make this more than just a little demo. Let's um, make it a project. So. Yeah, usually I just do random stuff and then I give it to her and she cleans <laughs> it up a little and then people buy it, which surprises me. I mean, I drew a sad face on a radish and that's <laughs> awesome. made it sellable. People love it. Sad radish? Yeah. Saddish? Mm -hmm. It is a saddish. <laughs> I think the title's even sad radish. Uh, yeah. 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 And I love uh, the series that you do of all your um, uh, vegetables and everything that you do. I've got one of your little, I think it's like a little leek. He's like a little oh, happy yeah. little leek. Yeah, I love him. Um, yeah, during the pandemic, I, I was really, I did a whole bunch of vegetables and put faces on them. Yeah, it's so How fun. did you decide which are happy and which are sad? Uh, I think it just really depends on which way the stamp printed. Oh. Like some of them could go either way. <laughs> the face really lended to whether it was a happy face or sad face or just kind of like a meh. It yeah. was it was really how the rest of the the image went. Oh, gotcha. And the leak has a nice round area, you know, facial yeah. space, so it winds up smiling and happy. I look at a leak and I'm smiling. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think I was thinking about those like 1950s dancing vegetables that you would see at the drive-in theater. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were they vegetables? I'm thinking, I'm picturing like hot dogs and oh, popcorn. I think they were a little bit of everything, oh. but I we we really do a lot of garden themed. Yeah. yeah. A lot of garden things. And it makes sense. I mean, don't count this year, but normally our garden's amazing, although we've been getting a pretty good garden. So. Yeah, for being how neglectful we've been we're getting a lot of cucumbers and zucchinis in the midst nice. of harvest season yeah. right now so this year there's not going to be a ton of okay. of images from our garden it just i just not going to happen that's no, okay that's okay i yeah. i'm on a cat roll anyway we really oh. are cat and dog yes yeah, so you're a little meowdy um i love that's that. actually our cat chewbacca hitting on you he hits Aww. on everybody he's very friendly he's Aww. such a little <laughs> hitting on you oh he's yeah. a promiscuous cat. He's well, a... Yeah. i mean we put him in a cowboy hat and he's like hey <laughs> <laughs> i would be if i had a cowboy hat. <laughs> he doesn't actually like the hat the hat oh. um but he'll put up with it mm -hmm. um <laughs> especially if you give him food or if you like rub him and then all of a sudden if you're doing something and you're not paying attention to him he will come up and slap you on the butt Oh, goodness. This all describes wow. me so far. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it looks like the next one, instead of being called Meowdy, is just going to have to be called Jake. Oh. Just, oh. <laughs> oh. I have photos of me in a cowboy hat. I lived in Oklahoma for five years. I have to own a cowboy hat. It's the law down there. <laughs> I forgot about that. All right. So let's <laughs> get into some of these questions. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about art. Yeah, we've got questions Wait, here. we have been. No, yeah. But um, let's get into those sweet, sweet questions that we know that you all love so much. So first one off the bat, uh, what got you guys into art? Well, I mean, working together happened because uh, Becky got sick with a neurological disease and we were looking for something we could do together. Uh, and then we had to sit down and talk about what we were going to do because it had to be really different from what we do in our own personal work. Mm -hmm. so. Right. And it had to be something that, um, like, I can't cut all the time because I get, like, serious hand tremors or um, extreme numbness or dexterity issues with my hands. So I needed something that was going to be a little bit more flexible. And Lisa's like, well, what if I do the printing and when you can't or, you know, so we, it was something that we'd be able to play off together. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that even when I'm having my hand tremors or dexterity issues, I'm able to fold paper. Mm -hmm. Um, so I couldn't necessarily do all the 
the binding part of the book binding, but I could do other parts of it. I could do covering of the covers with paper and um, book fabrics, and I could do the folding and I can, I could create the signatures. And it was really easy things that I didn't necessarily have to focus on. Um, I don't know anyone out there who has tried, I know Shelby has, um, who has tried book binding, but it is very therapeutic and it's very like you kind of get into a zone where you're doing it and you're not even paying attention anywhere because it just there's a flow to it mm -hmm. and so we were able to work on that and that's why I said there are things that I really enjoy doing that Lisa doesn't enjoy as much like Lisa will leave me a stack of paper and be like yeah you know have this folded by the time they get home from class and I'm like okay <laughs> and I sit there and I fold the paper and she gets home and she's like okay so you got all my signatures ready to go we're good to go yeah I'll bind these tonight and I'll wake up the next morning and they're all bound wow well I love the sewing part I really don't like folding and I really hate cutting oh I know I hate those too I'm I'm more of the sewing. I'm I'm a little more on Lisa's side with this. One. I get it. Yeah. Like when I when I didn't have any problems and I could do it like all, mm -hmm. I was okay. And I I loved there were like I loved doing the Coptic stitch, which is one of our favorite ones to do. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the second best selling book, FYI. Yeah, and um now it's a little bit harder like for me and it's funny because I'll sit there and I'm like oh yeah I'm, I'm like I'm doing good I'm not having any issues today Lisa I'll do some sewing with you and I'll sew and then I look and she's gotten like four done by the time that I finish one wow yeah it's insane <laughs> a well-oiled machine <laughs> yes. yes Lisa is a machine thank you <laughs> I met both you guys together you know no, yeah yeah, yeah. But honestly I, if I was gonna pick one I'd probably go folding because like, I is. like origami kind yeah, of, yeah. and yeah, and also I'm like, I knit a little bit and crochet, okay. yep. and the repetitive yes. thing is kind of fun for me. I, I just, mind, I don't want to say mindless. No, it is. like, you get in the in the zone, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, it's, it's really meditative, yeah. and it's easy. I, I think it's good for clearing your mind and yes. having something to focus on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when I start having my neurological issues, I can do that, and I'm not... I'm focused on it, but it's not to the point where I have to really concentrate. And it actually will help calm some of the things that are going on down, which is really kind of cool. And then at the same thing with the painting, like Lisa absolutely detests painting. I don't know why she's really good at it. Um, but I can sit there and I can paint like it's funny she'll like give me this pie stack of ones and she's like okay work on these and I'm like all right and so I'll just sit there and I'll start painting and I won't even realize that like five hours have gone by and I sat and I was watercoloring the entire time wow <laughs> yeah so I just don't have the patience for it I think that's why everybody gravitates towards different medias mm -hmm. yeah like, I want the instant gratification of seeing the image printed nice crisp clean black ink and just there so that i totally understand Boom, read. yes yes i totally understand <laughs> which so. makes sense for your yeah. love of printmaking yeah. it really does <laughs> just so. instant gratification come on <laughs> when i started this podcast i knew nothing about printmaking like absolute zero and which now, is weird in this area there's so I many printmakers yeah. i am i am very ignorant <laughs> or was i should say and yeah now i've learned so much it seems like a really cool thing and i don't know why it's not more i don't want to say more mainstream but like why aren't why ain't, why ain't everybody out there print making yeah <laughs> because <laughs> painters are snobs and they take all the glory oh. burn i don't shots agree. fired I, i'm oh. not i'm not siding with becky on that I i'm joking that we have lots and lots of painter friends yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. we and love painters we many do. of them have been on your podcast yes. <laughs> have. yeah love you guys love all of yes. you <laughs> please know i was just joking <laughs> i paint in my real work yes so please <laughs> remember true. that yes well, now I know I, who I can go to if I need to fold some signatures. Uh, yeah, I'm yes, Jake. Jake too. I think I'm busy. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> darn it. Well, uh, go, moving on to our next question. Um, what are some of your earliest art memories? Well, we were actually talking about this on the way here, and it's pretty much the same. Our mom is a whirlwind. And so our memories of our earliest ones, all I mean, I think a lot of your podcasters have said that, that their parents yes. have really played a big uh, we remember doing crafts with her at home and um, also going to Chicago and going to the museums and looking at the windows and going down for um, Christmas. Yep. Yep. 
supermarket. Well, and not only that, like we traveled a lot as kids, not like, you know, far and wide, but we would do car trips. And every single time that we would go, we wound up at different types of museums and we were looking at art and she was taking us to places where they had these huge murals and stuff like that, anything that were, was going to engage us. And we, it's funny because we talk about it now and um, some of our first toys that were our favorites were things that were books, us making books or printmaking ones. Like Lisa had a Barbie one that wound up making relief prints it was awesome okay that's cool and um our aunt when we would go on these road trips um she was a teacher she would buy like these surplus books and she would give each of us a book me my cousin and my my sister all these books and the the our job for the entire trip was to illustrate and to to write about our trip in these blank books that these were hardcover books that she got for us and so we would we oh would don't bake. aw it's pretty much a time suck to keep us busy <laughs> well, for yeah. with each other in well, the car you're cataloging and capturing the yeah. trip i that's the perspective i got um and and you're right <laughs> yes but it is also a yes. keeping everybody busy so we're not fighting yeah yeah <laughs> i mean uh, kill two birds with one stone why not yeah exactly. being an only child i guess i was not thinking of that perspective <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it really it really was. Yeah, it, like, you clearly didn't play this game. Stop touching me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of that or, oh, wait, did she fall asleep? Good. Can I take her batteries out of her tape player? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you just made us sound really old, tape player. <laughs> oh, it is true. We are really old. but uh. I listen to cassette tapes every day. Wait, really? I'm not kidding. That's awesome. awesome. I have a cassette <laughs> tape player on my desk at work. That's and, awesome. Yeah, That's I make awesome. my own mixtapes because yep. <laughs> I like old media. I mean... No, not, no, you can say not it. Not new <laughs> media. No, no, old media is fine. That's all right. I get it. Hey, we're we're really old media. Like 1450s is our jam. Yeah, the yeah. good old days. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Black Plague. <laughs> and, uh, I don't yes. know if that the was the printing 1450s. press. Yeah, some historian at home is going. That was the 1390s. <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's hilarious. hopefully they're not checking our work nope. <laughs> or listening to this because you're in the wrong place. I feel. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, no fact checkers for you yeah i don't think they so. haven't piped up yet honestly you know if you're at home fact checking us let us know yeah give us or some feedback don't yeah we'll take anything at this point i love a hater yes we love a hater oh no now i said that and it's all gonna stem from this podcast yeah. i don't know how uh, that's impossible uh anyways so uh who would you say or who or what um influenced your artwork um well again i think we're going to answer it as rudbeckia and okay, not yeah. each other yeah. so right now literally it's our cats oh well, yeah because <laughs> we're drawing them yeah our cats um and well but for the business actually we joined the american crafts council it's really wonderful. They do a magazine, they do workshops for artists. And so they've been very helpful for actually kind of planning a career on how to actually make some money off of what we all do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's been really helpful. We've also um, like joined a couple like botanical and, mm -hmm. and that sort of Ooh. thing. And um, like I joined the um, Wisconsin Historical Society for the same, just for inspiration and different oh, she things. She has visions of like dressing up in like old timey clothes and going to make book binding at the like Simmons Island thing. Oh, the Pike oh. River Rendezvous. I can't, mm -hmm. nope. But she's all about it. If, they, if, they, if anybody's listening that does that, Becky will come and bind historically accurate books with historically oh, accurate materials. That would be awesome at like Old World Wisconsin or uh, something. I may yeah. be smiling over here. Really, oh, don't really tell Dan Joyce. He's, he can hook you up with the museum. Yeah. Oh, the, I know him. Black, He's a board member. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he does blacksmithing. Yeah. There, so See, there so you maybe you we go. can make his dream happen, Becky. <laughs> Connections. Yes. <laughs> But I mean, I think that that's what that's, really, and then yeah. like the things around us that really inspire us. Uh, as far Becky, as the they're going to think we're crazy cat people who only hang out in the garden. In the garden, and then you like, say that like it's a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, <laughs> we've been doing a lot of Lake Michigan lately. Well, that's because we heard that as a comment um, at the market. They were like, "Oh, where's the Kenosha stuff?" Oh. oh. So we were like, oh, okay. I like to draw. I'll just drive around one day and draw stuff. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, that kind of stuff is getting really big lately. I yeah. see a lighthouse all everywhere I go and streetcar. And, well, yeah. we've always done lighthouses. They were more 
we were asking, you know, for dune images, lakefront oh, okay. images. Mm -hmm. Because we actually did um, a Door County uh, trip at one point in time. So we had a lot of lighthouses from that. And Oh, yeah. Th that was what happened. They saw a Racine image and they were like, oh, this is great. Oh, it's Racine. Do you right, have any yeah. Kenosha things? <laughs> yeah, it was really, I was, I'm like, but it's just right here in Racine. And they're like, yeah, we want the Kenosha one. <laughs> so we funny. made one with one of Dale Stacy's on it. It was oh. amazing. Mm hmm Aww. Awesome. Love that. Um, just my personal comment, the whole, I think the whole red lighthouse thing is becoming a little overplayed oh my gosh. for me personally. Shelby, you're going to get canceled. I know I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to agree with Shelby because oh. I've just seen it so much ever since. Like, I don't know. Cause actually, I'm... frankly, it should have been canceled in like 1940. <laughs> like we're all doing it. Like, yeah. Well, like we don't need a lighthouse anymore. Is that <laughs> no, what you're no. saying? <laughs> the lighthouse is fine. I think Shelby's talking about the image is a lighthouse and I'm just agreeing yeah. that yeah. like everybody's got a lighthouse image. Yeah. Retire it. Maybe think about putting out that lighthouse Actually, <laughs> when we were at, um, yeah, I would, but I can't because you want to know why we sell it. Yeah, it's really sells. regular. Yeah. It we uh -huh. were at uh, full steam ahead this year, and one of our friends jokingly said, "Hey, I decided I wanted to sell the one this year, so I put a lighthouse on it." <laughs> oh, it was the octopus killing the killing or yeah, like, so yeah, so attacking the lighthouse. Yeah. Joe put a lighthouse on his image this year, and I'm just like, oh. And so what good. happened? He was one of the first ones to, to sell, sell this year. I'm just like. I would. See, that's the problem. It's cringeworthy, yeah. but it also he's he made right. a really great image. I would buy yeah. that. I'm sitting here going, I love a lighthouse. <laughs> oh, we'll <laughs> hook you up. Yeah, got lighthouse. We'll hook maybe, you up. <laughs> maybe switch to the other lighthouse. Maybe do the brick lighthouse, the South Port oh, lighthouse. Oh, that's a, we have done that one, I think. Yeah. It's the more hipster of the lighthouse. <laughs> Chris Allen from History Center, if you're listening, I'm sorry. Or you're welcome, depending on your opinion of that statement. Oh, that's just so funny. Super funny. I've just seen too many. I need a break. I what need are, to, yeah. Don't worry. The, hey, yeah. the great a, thing about art is that you don't have to like yeah, a lighthouse exactly. or buy a lighthouse. Yeah. Yeah. There's exactly. a plethora of other images out there. <laughs> yes, that's true. Definitely. All right. Uh, next question. Um, We've touched on this a little bit already. Uh, who are some of your favorite artists that can include like national artists, local artists, both? Okay, literally it changes all the time. Yes. But right now, my favorite living artist is a man named Carlos Barbarina. And he's working in Chicago. And he is, in my opinion, amazing. One of the best living relief printmakers, and his work is political and beautiful and mm. amazing. I talk about him all the time. My students are like, Carlos Barbarina. They're always like <laughs> mocking you. About yeah, it. a little bit. He's amazing. And then as far as a local artist, I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to oh. take, I'm going to take Kelly Witte's <laughs> track <laughs> and um, not answer that, but I will say this. There is so much awesome stuff going on and yes. so many amazing people making amazing things. I try and buy something at every event we go to just because mm -hmm. I think it's that important. And there's that much good stuff being made. And there's that, like, literally, I think that we buy from um, everybody. A, like, we're a different we're committed. <laughs> every single Union Mark Art, yeah. Union Park mm -hmm. Arts Market. Mm -hmm. It's a different vendor every single time. Um, oh, and more than one. Just yeah, because, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like I may have gotten Lisa some Christmas presents this last one. Um, <laughs> I but, got a metal cat this year that's oh, made out amazing. of uh, like shoe, a horse horse shoes. Shoe. I got one of Brenna's little skull heads. Yeah. Oh, I love uh, those. Betsy and June. I, you know, I think <sighs> that, I mean, I know I'm leaving people out, but literally buy stuff. Yeah. There's yeah. so much good stuff. I decided a few years ago that I didn't want to have anything ugly in my daily life. And that includes utensils and plates and everything. So I just started buying stuff because it's amazing. I'm looking yeah. at really beautiful glass right now. Yes, definitely. I'm probably going to go home with a piece of really beautiful <laughs> glass right now. And I love buying um, all different things. But I lately I've been gravitating a lot to like different jewelers and so on. Mm -hmm. And there are so many really wonderful jewelers in well, the area. Becky got in on Martin Antaramian way back in the day. Oh, she got I one did. of his like... Uh, his chain mail. Yeah. His, of our oh, past guests. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When he was still making chain mail um, necklaces, mm -hmm. I got a steal of a chain mail necklace. Ooh. I like covet that thing because I know how much work went into it and he it way yeah. underpriced it. Yeah. And he doesn't do that anymore. He so does like, not. Wow, you got it. It's a collector's item. It man. is. Wow, it's wow. gorgeous. <laughs> and for the folks at home that are listening in envy at the awesome <laughs> deals they got at the art market, the next one is October 16th. 
Yeah, so I like the plug. October. It's a good one. We'll be and we'll be too, there. FYI. Yeah. Yes. Stop by and say hi and pick up some Christmas presents. Absolutely. Yeah. It was it's the last outdoor market, so yeah. you know, stock up before we're not out there. Yeah. It's, yeah, you know, it's definitely. Don't let it pass you by. Um, so yes, shop local, support local artists, and that's definitely one place that you can do that at. Uh, and we are going to take a quick break. And we are back. Hello. Thanks for uh, rejoining us, folks. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Shelby and I are here with Rudebeckia Press. Yes, we've got Lisa and Rebecca with us talking all forms of printmaking and bookbinding and all that good stuff. Um, and right yeah. now we're going to find out what is their motivation to create? That was the question, guys. I hope that wasn't too uh, <laughs> sly of me to just sneak that in there. What's your motivation to create? I think I got it. You Deadline did. and a calendar. Oh. I know, right? <laughs> the a powerful I, thing. Yeah. I was just going to go with money. I have to be able to buy my cat's food. Oh, true. That's it. Also, well, I mean, to be fair, this was yeah. formed as a business, and the purpose of a business is to make some revenue. So mm -hmm. that is a fair answer. Money. Probably not the best answer. <laughs> Money and a calendar. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> well, and if you hadn't been able to figure it out, I am the calendar organizer deadline person of mm -hmm. the two of us. If I, if I didn't plan like a schedule for us, we would literally be doing nothing. Yeah. Not a thing. <laughs> Stack of art and it's there and it's like, what do we do with it? So, yeah. And I mean, I guess in all real answers, like, it was really to give me something to do when I got sick that was giving me something to create because I was getting really depressed. And she couldn't really move off the couch, so we had to find something she could do like in one spot. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. And so like that became the initial motivator. And then um, once things started going and I started getting better, it kind of grew from that. And then really it was just like oh we like we had another conversation it was like okay so yeah now that we're doing this what what are what are we going to do with all this art that we made mm -hmm. well yeah because we never expected to sell anything mm -mm. we just made stuff to make us happy and just to kind of giggle and have fun with and uh it did come to a point where becky got to a more stable place with her health and then what do we do yeah. and literally yeah like we make art about our pets yeah. <laughs> i mean who's gonna want images of our pets lots of people chewbacca is yes. very popular <laughs> he is uh, well with his handsome charming looks it's it's pretty easy it's pretty i agree easy. yeah <laughs> thank you yes <laughs> so i guess it, it all stemmed from that and it's grown and now the motivation is I, I still i'm sorry it's to make room for new stuff we're mm. um lisa is very very productive uh, when it comes to printmaking and bookbinding. And it literally, if we were not selling and actually doing this as a business, we wouldn't have any room in our studio at all. Well, I mean, that gets to another motivation because my um, Trenton Baylor gave mm -hmm. me some really good, we graduated together. And he was like, Lisa, you got to quit making so much stuff. You're flooding the market <laughs> with your stuff. You Ooh. need to find something else to do. And I'm like, oh, okay. And it's not uncommon for printmakers to do more than one line of work. So it's, I mean, or even have pseudonyms. Our friend Bill goes by three different names. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so that's also, you know, I am very productive. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we need to have some, I need an outlet. So <laughs> Rebecca is partly an outlet for that. Okay. Well, and I've noticed like if she stays in one lane too long, she starts getting really frustrated with it. Mm -hmm. So having the multiple lanes for her to express her creativity makes her a much more pleasant person to be around with and live with. Okay. That is also <laughs> fair. A valuable investment. <laughs> it really is. It makes both of us more sane. Like literally it really does. Oh my gosh. When I retired from teaching the first time, my family looked at me and was like, um, nope, you need to go back and start <laughs> teaching again because you forget how to talk to human beings when you're just in your studio all the time. Aww. She will. She'll be down there for like eight hours and she, I'll, like, and you know, she'll get up, you know, like, 
this is her normal schedule during the summer. She'll get up around 10, but she's already been up because the dog and the cat have already been harassing her. Um, so she'll get up, she'll be hanging out, she'll eat her breakfast, she'll, you know, maybe watch the news a little bit, she'll go outside, and then all of a sudden she's in her studio. And I come home from work and she doesn't even realize like that it's already time for me to be home from work. Wow. Like it completely becomes oblivious to her. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, I wish I did because I, I have a lot of students who go through this and friends who go through this. I'm never not motivated. I never have no ideas. I I mean, thanks to Dennis Buzik, I keep a idea journal in case <laughs> I ever were to dry up with ideas. I could review back into it. But so far, it hasn't happened. <laughs> well, but there are times that you have gone through and looked like this. I'm just talking about from like the business point. There are things that we have gone back and looked at and revisited and that sort of thing. Not because our ideas are drying up because they were things that we had wanted to do and we didn't have a chance to get to them. So Lisa is the biggest user of our sketchbooks in our journals because she's always keeping multiple lists of things. And also I'm cheap, which is why I wanted to learn how to make a hand-bound journal <laughs> I mean, in the first place. Why not? <laughs> yeah, you, you always got one on hand. I always love having that. Um, just whip one run out and just be like, all right, I made it. Boom. Was that one of your motivations for taking the class too? Um, not really. It was learning more about paper making because um, mm -hmm. I took a college course at UW Parkside over the summer and um, I don't think they offer it anymore. It was just that one time kind of special thing. So my main motivation to take it was basically to learn how to make paper. And um, it turned into, oh yeah, book binding and all this other stuff was packaged into the class. And I just got kind of excited about it. Um, I do like sewing, I do some embroidery stuff. So it just became second nature doing books. So and it was kind of like a weird falling into it. <laughs> So no, no, that's yeah. actually how a lot of things happen. Like I fell into bookbinding because I had, according to my mother, to take a class from Lisa when she came home from grad school mm -hmm. and I fell in love with it. And then I did my study abroad and learned more bookbinding and came home and shared it with Lisa. And like we just bounce off back and forth. It's been amazing. Oh, you guys, this is so sad. So when I got home from grad school, my mom w was not interested in giving me any money. Well, who would, she, right? <laughs> so she's like, but I'll help you earn money. And mm. so we, I signed up to teach a class here. I had five students. One was my mom, one was <laughs> Becky, one was my best friend, Connie, and then two random strangers who got stuck with us. <laughs> it was amazing. What have we gotten now, ourselves into? <laughs> now, it was amazing. I have so many friends actually from teaching that book class here. Like, mm. Yeah. yeah. That's an and amazing that's, support. It's yeah. weird. That's how I got my start too. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> book binding at Lemon Street. It'll oh, take yeah. you places. It will. Um, being an instructor at local art galleries, that could take you places. So. It does. Yes. It does. And here we are. <laughs> and I really feel left out right now <laughs> not being a book binder. Well, you could teach crocheting. I, I, but I mean, like, specifically well, yeah. book binding. Well, we could, well, the take three of class. us could teach you. Yeah. I know the name of a few of the uh, stiletto stitch. Is that a, th a thing? No. Oh, no. my God. What was the thing you said to the Dire Need on the Dire Need episode? A stab? Stab. Yeah. Uh -huh. Japanese stab. That's a very different. Copy stab. Stitch. Stiletto is a type of a knife. Maybe yeah, that's but that's right. not even how the book's made. It's like literally you take a Josh, ball and you like, edit this oh, out. <laughs> yeah, you stab it. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> and you use a mallet to pound it through. It's awesome. Well, I have proven my uh, true we lack can take of a class. printmaking skills. Yes. Well, if you're ever feeling really frustrated, it's the best book to get you from a bad mood to a good mood, like instantly. Yeah. You smack and stuff. Yep. Smack. Yeah. It. It's awesome. <laughs> Piercing things. It's it's fun. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it is the least, yes. the absolute least sellable book. Yeah, but um, it is the most tension releasing. It's amazing. Okay, and it looks beautiful when it's just sitting there. Oh, it's a great table or book. Or originally, it was designed it really. to hang from an obi belt. Like it's, it was a business. It's the only book that started as a business book. It started in the business class and not in the, um, like the emperor's class. Oh. You know, because it started off as a receipt book that Japanese businessmen would wear on their obi belts. Wow. Yeah, you just kind of rip it off. and yep. Okay, that makes sense. And it's stab. Oh. Yes. Stab. Okay. Yeah. Japanese stab. Try to ingrain that in my head for next time yep. so I don't embarrass myself again. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> I feel like it's probably not going to come up maybe ever again. No. <laughs> it's in your back pocket. It's very obscure. <laughs> yeah. Most then... bookbinding things are, so don't worry. You're, you're fine. Uh, 
So getting into our next question, um, you mentioned uh, money before. So if time and money were no object, what would your dream project okay, be? Okay, again, I think your listeners might hate us for this answer. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Well, okay, so when we come up with a cool idea, we do it. We find a way to make it happen. Yep. Like the Rude Becky thing, we did it. Uh, full steam ahead. We we ask around to see if we could find a partner to help us organize it. So we did. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think I have dreams maybe big enough that I would need to. No, no. I think that I would do like if if like oh, you would quit your job and you I would, would quit like... my job. Mm -hmm. Um, I would maybe do like a on a plot of land and a gigantic like studio that had everything that you could possibly need mm -hmm. where I could like make up like these little pods that people could come and stay and visit me and like have like little art time you mean like, an artist retreat that's the yeah, name of that it's an no, artist no, retreat <laughs> just for my friends oh okay private exclusive <laughs> so like Shelby's like you know what I need to get out of the I need to get out of the city this weekend so i'm gonna go on the other side of the interstate and i'm gonna stay by becky and i'm gonna make books all weekend oh yay seems See? pretty well thought out i like that idea <laughs> it actually does seem pretty well thought out jake is just like you know what i really want to learn how to make a book i hear shelby's going out to that retreat this weekend so i think i'm gonna go learn how to make a book wow. lisa's out there because she's making a print that day and we're just all jamming in the studio i um mm -hmm. i feel like my dreams are really small because i would probably still be working in my basement no no you'd be out by my studio helping i'd have a little <laughs> Does your studio have a basement? <laughs> no, no, it actually has sunlight. Oh, it, it, it is a basement, but it's full of light. Hey, almost all print shops are in a basement. The fact that I teach at Carthage and I have a full window and a balcony and light coming in is like amazing. Wow. I can't even believe it. Yeah. See, in in my dream, I'm not gonna live in the same house as my sister any longer. She's gonna live side by side oh. next to me. So she's gonna have her own house, and I'm gonna have my own house. But we're gonna have this joint little studio area in the back. Well, oh. hey, I guess we know somebody who um samira gadesis is building a studio at her house we can see if we can get her architect the plans look amazing <laughs> yes yeah, see that there is my unlimited see look, see, look yes. her unlimited just turned into a plan that we're gonna try and make yes. happen yeah i'll let you guys know how it works dreams okay. are becoming realities yes. <laughs> i can't wait for the invite to come out <laughs> it will be there and oh. i'm gonna invent a stiletto stitch <laughs> that's, yeah that's my dream project yes <laughs> It could happen. New books are being invented every day. All the time. So that's your task. Oh, God. <laughs> Check back in like 20 years. <laughs> oh, I love that. All right. Yeah, we're in the fun part of the show now. This, yes. These are the fun questions. Speaking of, uh, what are some of the funniest comments you've ever heard about your art? Well, oh. we, we've heard a lot, but the I think the funniest one recently is um, I drew a picture of a fish and it was really three fish that were kind of morphed together, loosey goosey drawn. And we had a couple of fisher people come up to us and be like, ladies, that's not one fish. That is multiple fish. And um, we were like, uh, okay, yeah, what happened it's here? <laughs> Correct. Uh, and then he's like, well, could you could you do some accurate fish? And I was like, I like to draw, so sure, I guess. And he's like, nobody's going to want that fish. <laughs> and you know what? He's right. We've never sold one of those Not fish. Not one. Oh, no. wow. He was, he was correct. And so we were like, note taken. Uh, so then I started drawing accurate fish, Wisconsin fish. Mm -hmm. um, and we made a tree. We made a card. We made a bunch of stuff. And so now the fisher people are literally bringing their kids over or the kids are bringing their parents over and they are pointing out which fish are which. Like it's a and test. It's like, yeah, <laughs> like, like, all right, dad, come here. Check this out. Name the fish. Yeah. Fish quiz. Yeah. yeah. And they get really excited and they may not be able to buy one of the bigger pieces, but they'll definitely like they have they we've sold multiple of the Christmas trees of it. Um and we have sold Well, it's officially Christmas. It's officially oh. Christmas. And um like the other ones, like seriously, I don't think like we have had trouble keeping some of the cards on hand. Oh, so the, okay, the moral of that story is sometimes take a note because the Fisher people were generous with their purchasing after we started drawing the fish accurately. Yeah, huh. you know, we we had um, book people request like certain sports teams and stuff like that. But then they literally, the same person that requested it would come back, not purchase a single thing. What? We had a customer come um, We were when we were uh, down by Harbor Market and 
you know, I'd really like it if you had like a Wisconsin print. Okay. We made Wisconsin prints and now it's one of our biggest lines. Oh yeah, we sell a lot of Wisconsin yeah. Like things. just the shape of the yeah. Wisconsin yeah. or like well, something they they were looking at our, our the artwork that we were doing, the landscapes, and they were like, Wow, you love Wisconsin and we're like, Yeah, we really do love Wisconsin. And then they're like, Why don't you have any Wisconsin? So we we looked at each other, we we're like, Wow, we hmm. must be really dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so then because the fact there's a lot of people from the boats and so on, yeah. a couple of them saw the Wisconsin stuff and it's like, it'd be really nice if you could do something with Illinois. Right. So we did a few things with Illinois and then... The Illinois people don't buy Illinois themed things. No. They like Mm-mm. to buy my real work at full price with no complaints, but, they, but <laughs> not, they, they're not, not interested in Illinois themed Mm-mm. stuff. So we're hitting a different group of like Wisconsin Illinois people. people will like, Wisconsin people love Wisconsin as much as we do. And our mom used to say go jump in the lake all the time <laughs> all the time Very popular. and that's one of our most popular and it's funny because you'll always see, this is one of my funniest stories it's like all of a sudden i'll see somebody start laughing and then come here you've got to see this and then they point it out and then somebody who clearly is a sibling and they're probably about mine and lisa's age so in their 40s and they start laughing and it's just like oh your mom said that too and they're like yeah all the time and i so, think my mom said that too <laughs> yeah and it's, it's so it's something like there's a little bit of nostalgia with it the other one that always gets me is lisa like we'll be in the booth like lisa will be talking to somebody and they'll ask her a question and she'll answer and then she goes to, to ask somebody else or answer somebody else's question and i'll go and answer a question for the same person she just had and they'll be like they'll finally look at me and they're like oh wait are you two sisters <laughs> no no we're not those are pretty funny <laughs> never seen her in my life before <laughs> who is this person i'm just stepping in to help out she looked like she needed help yeah, yeah. i was just strolling by yeah you know well what and every once in a while lisa will be like um you know let me know if you have any questions and every once in a while she'll throw in the and if I don't know the answer, I'll make it up. And like that one always gets a double take. Like what? <laughs> They're not going to know. Yeah. <laughs> but most people don't point that out. They just Mm-mm. do it. <laughs> I say it. I've been using that stick for a while. I think sometimes people come to market because they like to hear the story. Yeah. They like to hear the personality and get to meet the artist. Well, for real though, that's yeah. what we always say is it's, it's not just a place to buy art. It's a place to meet the artist. I know. It's a, you know. This is a thing. I guess it's um, not a funny story, but it's what, one of my favorite stories mm-hmm. is one of the images. Um, and this is in Lisa's regular work. They were she was the person was just like sitting there and she said, this looks really familiar. And Lisa sits there and she goes, oh, well, is it out on blah, blah, blah. And she said the exact county road it was on. And the lady goes, oh, my God, that's my backyard. Oh, <laughs> She bought it. She, she bought, bought it. it. I'm like you. I was like, "What are you doing? You see this view every day." And she's like, "Oh, I love this." And I was like, "Wow, but that's my mind view. blown." <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, but it was so. It was just like it was one of those like completely like holy crap moments. Like not only because Lisa can any in any one of our images, she can tell you exactly where if it's a landscape, where it came from, and all of that information and literally she told the lady where it was on the county road and the lady's like that's my backyard (laughs) (laughs) creepy yeah well and i think i mean this is a dangerous question for us because we could probably do a whole podcast episode just on funny crap we hear oh Oh, it's so Uh, bad (laughs) well i mean well collectively i mean together we've only been working like on rudbeckia since 2007 but we've been doing sales since 2000. So that's a lot of yeah. time to build up comments from people. People say the darndest yeah. things. <laughs> they really do. And sometimes it's funny because they'll realize what they said. And then they have this like look of, oh, my Lord, what oh, did I do? We had somebody who was like with the books. They were pretty rude about the books. And then they, I, I speak back. I don't care if they're buying from us or not. If, they, if you say something rude or whatever, Stand I'm going to say something. Art, yeah. yeah. Um, and she actually walked like two booths down from us and then turned around and came back and apologized wow yeah it was i was like well you didn't have to do that like i you know <laughs> and then you're like oh yeah. well uh. yeah well but- we've heard i've heard lisa like them come by and say oh i could make this and lisa goes yeah go ahead <laughs> go do it <laughs> you that. try love that let me know how it goes i'll be here next month yeah. <laughs> 
Ay, the ay, look ay, on ay. those people's face is hilarious because it looks like they feel like Lisa has offended them then. And well, no, just I like... think they think that we don't have any hearing. Right. Like, that's weird, right? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. the whole customer. <laughs> the customer's always right. You know, you basically <laughs> let them walk all over you. Art but... market, no. different terms. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, oh, this would never. This has never happened at art no, market. No, no, art market, ever. everybody's oh, been good. really cool. Good. Like, yeah. I would bet all the artists who participate are probably going to say something similar. Oh, the art market, that, that doesn't happen. No, this would happen at, like, it would regularly happen towards our harbor market or um, when we did some yeah, of the... Yeah, but that's not all people going for art. That's no. people going exactly. for vegetables and to get food. It would be, yeah, it would be some of the other market type things that were not... I actually think some of the funniest ones have been at um, uh, Earth Day. Yeah. <laughs> because we're unexpected, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Like. Uh, and we do that one that. completely educational like gateway they'd have that their earth yeah. day every year yeah. so that one literally is talking about our recycled projects and like the fact that we have a really big commitment with our business to have as little waste possible mm-hmm. and to reuse and remake things and mm-hmm. yeah and that's the only place that i've ever actually had to ask somebody to leave the booth Ooh. oh she was really mad that we named our press rudbeckia She's like, you should be selling flowers. This is tricking the people. And I'm like, well, <laughs> the press. What? press. Yeah. Did you not finish reading? She did the not time? care. Oh like, my goodness. She's walking into the Apple store being like, I'm hungry. I need a Granny Smith. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That I, is that I, lady. I that, and I was finally like, you know what? We're not going to disagree. Can you just keep going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to stay here. Well, I guess we're not going to agree. It's like, it's okay. Yeah. She did. And the lady just kind of looked at her and she goes, no, no, I'm done. You guys can, you I can go away. on. I just walked away from her and then she was looked at me and then just like, yeah, go. <laughs> she moved on to the next Hopefully booth. Hopefully they did some soul searching. I know. I, she started to harass the lady next oh, to us God. too. It was like, I think that that was her mission that day was literally to harass everybody at the art or the, the Earth Day booths. And I'm just like, I don't know if you guys have ever been to it, but it is like this and it's so chill. People are nice. They want to come over. They want to talk to you. They want to find out what you do. They want to figure out why you do the things that you do. Like they go and they ride the little bike to make the little car go around the track. And Oh yeah, the Kunersha Public Museum does all kinds of fun yeah. stuff there. I mean, the Gateway Show is amazing. I don't want anybody to think that it's not because it's oh, really it is. cool. Yeah. And it, but it's, it's totally not necessarily for selling. It is really to promoting the things that we can do to make our earth better, which... Like I said, Lisa and I have a big commitment to oh, that. Yeah. And it was just so weird to run like that like we um Jane Herring, mm-hmm. who we're looking at her beautiful uh, glasswork right now. Yeah. Um, she is the person who would help organize that. And oh, like, she doesn't help organize it. She was the she top won- dog organizer. <laughs> she's she did. super good at it. She Love did you, Jane. Yeah. for yeah. years. And um she came over and she actually asked that she goes, has there been a lady coming around and like harassing people? And Lisa's like, yeah, I asked her to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's, yeah. And everybody's like, thank you. No, no, Jane, no she, like, didn't, she just left our space and started going yeah. after uh, other Jane people. Jane goes, okay, thank you. Can you tell me which direction she went? And Lisa's like, that way. And she oh, goes, no. thanks. And so <laughs> Jane went after, you know, to because other vendors had talked about how this lady had been harassing them. Yeah, well, so random that was my lady, funny. if you're listening, look inward. Yeah, uh, please. And she won't be. <laughs> no. Although podcasts are technically free, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe she is. Maybe. You, and, you know what? Hop on our comments. <laughs> Let us know. I said I wanted to hate her, didn't oh, I? No. <laughs> Jay, you no. could. You it really don't. is going to be I us that's going to get you a hater. <laughs> Have you ever had somebody come up to you and tell you that you were awful? I had a hater on my weather page once. <gasps> what? Right. Uh, it was it was brief. I don't think they're around anymore. But I they would that. the only thing they would do they made one rude comment and I kind of like pushed back like civilly and then yeah. like tons of other people like commented back like saying Jake's great no don't you know, lay off <laughs> and then like from then on he would just do like an angry face reaction to all of my oh, not wow. all of my posts but every once in a while I'd get one ang- there'd be one angry That's and it would be that guy enough, yeah. and I haven't seen him for like a year so oh. well good <laughs> yeah that's unnecessary yeah <laughs> um well I anyways I don't want to transition <laughs> like this do but a a <laughs> So um, we do have a lot of lovely events in our community, but um, are there any thoughts on the community, the local art community, anything that we need to improve of uh, on or any ideas that you have? Um, I think that there's a lot of amazing stuff going on. So it's actually not such a bad segue. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm just like going yeah. from this harsh topic to. No, oh, no. no. I, it's actually fun to talk about how much things have grown around oh, here. Oh, so much. Many... In the last 20 years, it's yeah. huge. 
so good. Yeah, so you have all the markets. Like, all the markets are amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, You have, like, I don't know how many people go out to the Parkside and the Carthage galleries, but there's really amazing shows. Like, I don't, I mean, and they're new all the time, and they're people that are local, but also people from away. Um, Carthage right now has a really great marble sculptor. Oh, nice. Who is pairing her marble work with felted work. So it's really crazy. Yes. Awesome. Oh. I need and to then, see that. And you then do. they also have, hey, I'm plugging this for you, Ryan. So be aware. Um, <laughs> and then also they have a really great um, crosshatcher who's also doing three dimensional, like structural pieces you can engage in, in like, like in a whole personal space. It's really cool. Yeah, cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, I, w I wish more people would go to those. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that people could go to more of everything. Like, that's oh, yeah. my thing. There's yeah. so many good things going on. Can we just get more people coming to them? Yeah, yeah I think that's one of the things that, that makes me sad is when people are just like, oh, there's nothing going on in the art scene here. Oh, it's um, ridiculous. And it's not true. <laughs> Have you looked around yeah. at what is going on yeah. in this, like, in Kenosha and Racine for art? Well, and I do think that that actually brings me to something that I think that is amazing is that when artists are finding a hole, they're plugging them. Like our mom wanted a quality winter market. You know what she did? She organized one. It's called the Working Artist Holiday Sale, and it's on Sunday, December 11th. <laughs> Boom. At the Union Go Club. At the Union Club. Um, our friend Yurga is doing an opening at her house coming up in October where you can yep. come and buy some of her awesome sculpture at her house mm -hmm. like that's awesome we did the i think we talked about full steam ahead already mm -hmm. like a lot of the things that are going right are artist-led initiatives like i mean lemon street saw a need for an art focused market and they filled that and i mean i can't i can't yeah. even think of the last time there was an actual art filled market that didn't have vendors for food or um other like just anything in between the artists i mean literally you go to art market and it's an art market yeah mm -hmm. lives up to its name yeah. yeah and i think that's why it's growing every year i do i do and i think i just think that there's like there's things that are happening as everything is evolving like i was talking to somebody a few weeks ago about when lemon street started Mm -hmm. And how at that time it was just the front gallery, you know, none of the the classroom space was used. I mean, it was well, this used. was classroom space. Yeah, mm. so that that was classroom space, and then the brick gallery we would use for a classroom space. And it's just like in the last twenty years, watching and seeing how much it has evolved, and just like now um, evolving with the podcast and everything. Like everything is growing, and it's adapting to what's happening in the world well that's one of the great things about lemon street gallery and i know that because you started right after school and mm -hmm. when i started here because i was a member for a long time um melanie let me try out so many different things yeah like just try it out to see if you know i so i would encourage artists to do that if you have an idea just ask us yeah yeah <laughs> or just see if you can find somebody who's into it and wants to help you mm -hmm. there probably is someone yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and not only that but like the amount of leisure classes that are are offered locally whether it's through yeah. hot shop or if it is the kenosha, the kenosha museum here. or here or the ram like there is so many different places that you can go to and you can take a leisure class and you can try something out actually um our cousin and her oldest daughter just took the class uh betsy's class for um wheel throwing mm -hmm. and they were so excited because she hasn't done anything really artistic in a while and her daughter has been doing painting but they really wanted something they could do together and the class was affordable it supplied all the materials that they needed and if they didn't like it it was literally two days and they can go on and try something else next time and i think classes are an easy way to get into like a new group Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know, because that is so there we I do have one legitimate criticism. OK. <laughs> and I feel Good. like it is that um, a lot of the people, particularly in Kenosha, but a little in Racine, they get a little like it's a little too clicky. Yeah. And so like you have Lemon Street people, you have our works people, you have Parkside people, you have Carthage people. 
you have, you know, Anderson people, there's all kind of, and it would yeah. be nice if there was more pollination. And that's what makes me sad about the loss of Get Behind the Arts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I feel loss. like Get Behind the Arts was the one thing that unified everybody, everybody yeah. because everybody got together for the party. Mm -hmm. um, the Kenosha people were going up to Racine to see mm -hmm. the Racine show. The Racine people were coming down here to see the Kenosha ones. And so that's the one thing that's made me sad since that's gone because nothing has really stepped in its place. But mm -hmm. I'm not going to offer a criticism without an answer. Yes. yes. And so this isn't on the same scale as that, but wouldn't it be cool if we just had an artist barbecue or an arts mm. barbecue that people who are, are artists or support artists just want to come and have like a potluck in the park and we could just all get to know each other a little better. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm more I like networking. that idea. Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Don't... I thought I was going to be out on a limb there thinking no. about like, I love no, it when no. my s I can still shock my sister. Like, that doesn't <laughs> happen very often. I surprised her. Yes, I agree with you. That is a great idea. Yes. Well, I mean, you guys agreed. You guys were shaking yeah. your heads. Yeah, networking what do you think is about... important. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Who doesn't love a barbecue? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean about that. I meant about kind of trying to find some unifying yeah, thing. Yeah, no. I, mm -hmm. I Definitely. Kidding, but No, no. Jake's going to man the grill. Yeah. <laughs> can you I, grill? I can learn. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a stiletto uh, flip. There um, you go. Yeah. There you go. But um, I know the Chamber of Commerce was um, talking about doing a branch to focus on um, the arts businesses and getting people together to have um, – kind of like support meetings and stuff so artists could come together and talk in a business setting and everything and be heard in a business setting. So um, not sure where that is. That, that that was a cool idea when it was mentioned, but um, yeah, it would be cool. Coming together and being heard and taken seriously as a business because the artists, they're running their own business. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it's Yeah, a lot that's of my work. biggest complaint about school is I think that all arts degrees should factor in business. I think they should have to take at least one marketing and accounting class mm -hmm. each, you know, like, yeah, definitely. I remember taking professional practice and being like, this is it. I thought yeah, there might be not, more. It doesn't. Yeah. And, and you only got that class because some of us complained in an earlier review because we went okay. to the same undergrad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that is really problematic. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, arts markets are an easy way into kind of like the selling of your work. But if you're going to be at art market and you're going to sit on your phone or read a book and ignore all the people coming up, that's not going to work. Right. It, you know, it does take some basic business skills to keep a spreadsheet, to keep your accounts in order, to mm -hmm. network, like, you know, yeah, to brand yourself. Like, and we don't do that either. Presenting on a level that um, like, oh, my frame is not hung or strung properly. It's those little things that. Yeah. My mat right. looks like somebody gnawed on it. Yeah. Maybe don't take, maybe replace that one before you bring it yeah, to them. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so those things are very important. So maybe more access to that um, information. And well, I think for the professional practices, um, Lemon Street and the Wisdom both offer classes or have in the past mm -hmm. offered classes on how to do that better, like taking better photographs so you're not showing grass. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the biggest way to get kicked out of a show or not accepted to a show is like having your whatever it is you're showing leaning mm -hmm. up against your garage and having grass at the bottom yeah. i can't even tell you how many times i've seen that as a juror Ooh. and just like oh i'm gonna take it right on the cement just face overview and just yeah. snap <laughs> no no <laughs> lighting yeah. and yeah there's a lot to it so well and it's also not i mean professional practices are for everybody like when we were setting up the stuff to send to you i sent it yesterday that's mm -hmm. not great like i could have i okay. should have it's done here. that it's here we have it we've got yeah. it <laughs> yeah i know but it's you know like i'm not just saying no. everybody i mean everybody needs to work on this yeah it's it's a pretty um one of those things that kind of slip through the cracks when you're presenting yourself you don't realize like oh this little thing can make a big impact so yeah so um Maybe we can get back into that. Um, Lemon Street can do some more professional practice. I think that'd be helpful. Well, um, I think it's got to be people who want it. Like, I mm -hmm. think that Melanie is a big supporter of that. And mm -hmm. I know that, like, it's not that it hasn't been tried here. It's that a lot of people, I know artworks tried it too. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and this and also the wisdom <laughs> they have to get people who want to take it and want to yeah. do it and that's yeah. sometimes hard that's you find the, a lot of people that actually say they want it but then they, they don't actually, don't want, actually, actually yeah. want well they don't want to hear somebody say okay well this these are the things that you could do better because all they're hearing is this is what you're not doing right, right. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Even though that's not what's being said, that's how it's being heard. Yeah. Uh -uh. Um, so those those classes can be really difficult. Why? Well, I, I mean, this is something that happens with my students with artist statements. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> well, when I was six years old, don't start an artist statement that way. That's not an artist statement. First of all, it comes in more of a line of a bio. And even then, it's a pretty boring one. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> like, yeah. Or not speaking in the terms of um, like third person. They always say I, I. And it's just like artist statements they need to be in the third person so little little piddly things like that so i feel like your eyes might be glazing no, over yeah, jake no. sorry about that <laughs> this is great this is great stuff Jake's like i had no idea all this stuff like was supposed to go into this wow they yeah. sound really petty you mean you don't just uh make stuff all day no you gotta do oh, other stuff gosh. too he's like that this is... sounds boring who wants to go through the boring stuff i think that's the biggest surprise for people wait a minute mm -hmm. i have to do other stuff than just make stuff. Yeah. It's which like, is like, yeah. wait, which is why I think so many people that have degrees in art don't use their degrees afterwards. Oh, I think you read the book Art and Fear. I might have. Ooh. Shut up. <laughs> that was but a scary book. It's, it's like 90, over 98% of the people with art degrees never make art again when they're done. Oh, wow. Like it's, it's super insane. depressing. Oh. No. And the thing is, is Lisa and I were like, we both heard that number and we're like, no, that can't be right. And we went through both of the people, both of my graduating class from Parkside, her graduating class from Parkside, which is an anomaly. You can't even like sixty five percent of us are still making work every wow, day. Um, and then her uh, graduating class from LSU. I think you guys are. Did all... you forget that I went to LSU? Uh, <laughs> no, no. I was trying to think. I as I was thinking, I'm going through the list of the people who you graduated with, and I'm like, I think you guys are all making art. Almost. Yeah. Oh. Um, but for mine, mine hit the nine the ninety-eight percent right right on the head. Mm. Because even my friends who are teaching art, most of them are no longer making their own art. Mm. Um most of the ones that are working in graphic design are no longer making their own work. Like I don't I think cried. you can count that. I think if they're working in their daily practice, whether it's teaching or in graphic design, I think they're still in it. Even if they're making artwork for a different purpose. That's not actually factored into that percentile. Oh, really? Okay. They're actually counted as success stories. Oh. Oh. I don't know if I would agree with it because I I just I guess No, I'm I'm saying you can disagree with it, but no, the no, actual no. Yeah, number yeah. they weren't factored in. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Maybe they shouldn't be, but I, no, no. Yeah. I guess that my thing was is when somebody like says, Hey, I'm never gonna print make again, come get my paper. Uh which has happened to us more than once. I inherited a bunch of paper and I mm. I said, but okay, because well, I, I mean, want the yeah. free paper. Yeah. Yeah. But so I mean it won't I mean both of those two people who have done that to us have transitioned into other things. And one's like now talking about possibly buying his own press. Um, but they do make art in their their regular life. One's a teacher and one is a graphic designer. Oh, okay. But um, for the longest time, they were just so burnt out with what they were doing at work all the time that they weren't making any art work outside. Yeah. That happens to everybody. It I does. think everybody has to take downtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Ebbs and flows, comes and goes. Carries over to science too. Yeah, I will say. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Although, yeah, I was gonna say, I, most of my people I graduated with, I feel are somehow still involved with what they do. Like, it. Yeah, I feel like the percentage is not nearly as. Well, I think the arts in general have a really low, and which is really, I mean, part of the reason I like teaching is because arts are for everyone. Mm -hmm. And arts can be appreciated and enjoyed by anyone, no matter what the quality or the talent. Like you get really mm -hmm. good benefits out of it just by doing it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you yeah. know, art is good. It is. <laughs> be an artist, make art. Yes. And if Do you it. can't or you don't want to, support artists. Exactly. Yes. Be an art appreciator. You have yes. so many options with the arts. So you really do. <laughs> it's endless. Yes. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> So as we're winding down, um, where can people find you guys? Well, we're going to be at the next arts market in October yeah. uh, because we've done all of them, I think, at this point. We have. From the beginning. Wow. Square yeah. It's been a, how many years now? Four? Since 2018. 2018 when but it was in the parking lot. Yeah, we started skipped in the parking lot. Yep. Yeah. 20. Yeah. Okay, skip 2020. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So. Uh, and then we have the Working Artist Holiday Sale. I think I mentioned that once already. Mm -hmm. Sunday, December 11th at the Kenosha Union Club. Um, we were thinking about doing a Kris Kringle. We're not sure if we're doing it. Still up in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, check our Instagrams mm -hmm. out and the Rudbeckia Press Facebook. Because it will be posted when yep. we are going to be places. Oh, oh good. Uh, stay you up to date. Know. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, and you. Oh, oh and yes. we'll <laughs> also. I, <laughs> no, we'll, you're good. <laughs> uh, we'll also, you will be able to find some of our wares here during artistry. Artistry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just got the invite for that in the mail. We're going to do that. Ooh, we love artistry. Great. I love to buy. I buy a lot out of oh, that yeah. show. Holy Me cow. Too. Yes. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Diane Levac has offered, or who has asked us to join her in her studio for the 16th Street um, holiday sale again this year. So we'll have well, some technically stuff. Technically, she there. invited me because we're friends, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for cutting me off, Lisa. I love you. <laughs> and, um, and the little details. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you'll find Lisa up there. You won't find me. Oh. I'll be here. We almost I'll be made elsewhere. it through the whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's fine. Uh, no, that's all right. I'll wait until she's sleeping tonight. We, we don't know if they're well. having it, though. That's the deal. I, oh, I that's right. I hope they're having it because, frankly, Diane's studio is amazing. And oh, if you, if you have seen not it been up there. Seen her work, you haven't seen it? I have. It's oh, my beautiful. gosh. It's beautiful. Stunning. It really is. good. Like, really good. And she's doing a whole new series of polymer stuff. I don't know mm -hmm. anything about polymer. And I look at it. And I'm like, oh, my God. I want that. I think I could. Wow. I am just starting to do some polymer things. And I get to have a play date with her. I cannot mm -hmm. wait. Um, because if you don't know, she's like amazing. Max. Okay, so we can't remember our stuff, but we'll just plug <laughs> other people's stuff. Yes. Go for it. <laughs> Max, she's like maximalism and colorfulness. It's just, it's amazing. awesome. Diane Levesque, so maybe we'll get her on the podcast sometime. Oh, maybe you should. You should. Definitely. So we're coming for you, Diane. Yes. <laughs> Um, and you can find us um, wherever you get your podcast: Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, our very own YouTube channel, and yeah, so anywhere you get your podcast. And you can also find us on social media: the Art Space Pod or the Art Space Podcast. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, our little TikTok that we haven't started. Oh, coming soon. Yes, coming <laughs> soon. I keep saying that. Huh. I'll get there someday. Um, so yeah, you can find us wherever. Pretty much, just type. Check us. Yeah, out. type in the Google Don't bar. Don't be a stranger. And you'll find us. So, um, but uh, and this is a quick little plug for the Creatives Club that is coming up in October. Uh, I'm pulling Which up a Thursday calendar. Is it? it is the third Thursday of every month. So it will be the on 20th. the 20th of August. Or not October. August. <laughs> My brain is mush today. October 20th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the gallery here. I will be here with uh, Jill Gorzelski and we will just have fun creating. So bring your project, come create and have fun with us. Have a snack, meet some local artists and just have some fun. Join the club. Yeah. The creatives club all righty and that about wraps it up for this episode and we will see you in the next one bye, bye. depression addiction the thrill that you seek our restlessness cages the fire we need we're here to inspire